I want to take just a couple of minutes and show you guys how to use DigiSigner. So DigiSigner is the electronic signature program that at Florida Luxury we give you guys to use. Uh, there's no cost to you. You guys do get the pro version. So let me show you. From the back office, this button right here says launch DigiSigner. Now you don't have to launch from this. You can just go to digisigner.com, but it's just as easy. If you're in the back office already, it's right there. If not, digisigner.com. When you go to log in, it'll ask you for your email address and your password. Now, if this is your first time logging into DigiSigner, just put in the email address that you have registered in the back office, right? So if you come in here, go into my account and go into my contact information, whatever the email address that you have in here is the one that it will use. So in this case, we put in that and then click the forgot password button. What it'll do is it will send you an email and then you can create your password. So we'll go ahead and log in. There we go. And you should see when you log in that it says DigiSigner Pro. If you don't see this pro version, then you aren't using the right email address. So you wanna make sure you see the DigiCenter Pro. Otherwise, I think it only gives you three documents at a time that you can do. Uh, and then it wants you to pay for the pro version. But like I said, at Florida Luxury, we give you this for free. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how this works. It's pretty straightforward. So up at the top left, you have the orange button that says upload document. So we're going to come in here and let me just go into my downloads. So let's just say that I want the seller's disclosure and that I also want the contract package. Now these are saved wherever they are on your computer, okay? When this pops up, it says your PDS, PDF has form fields. Do you want to include them? By default, we're going to say do not include fields and remember my, my decision. Um, because I want it, this to pop up so I can show you guys when I do the training. I don't click remember, but you should. So do not include the fields. Now, I've just uploaded these two documents. So what I wanna do is I wanna put a checkbox next to those two, and then I wanna come up to the top. I don't wanna use these send for signing buttons. I wanna come up to the top and click send for signing. Now I can call this, actually let's just call this the 5392 Mariner contract package, okay? First, I wanna open this document. So I click open doc and it allows me to put the signatures and dates and everything that I need in here. So signature field, we're going to click here for buyer one. I'm just going to resize this just a touch just so it kind of fits in the space. And then I'm going to use the date field. Now what's vitally important here is that you see sign and edit. This is my signature, my initials, text, date, and check mark. This is if you have to sign this document. I'm gonna show you where that comes in here in just a second. This bottom set is for your signers. So your buyers or your sellers. In this case, we have signer one. But let's say for a second that there were two buyers. So we had buyer one and buyer two. What I would do is when I come down here, I have signer one and then I have the option to add a new signer. So this will be signer two and I don't need to put the email address in there just yet. But when I do this, you'll notice that the color changes. So I have signer one and signer two. But the cool thing is you see how this box was the same size as the other. Once I set the size the first time, it remembers all of that. So you don't have to go in and resize it every time. You only have to size it once. Now, if I wanna switch between signer one and signer two, I have the ability to do that right here. What I typically do is if I have multiple signers on a document, I go through and put in all the signatures, all the dates, all the initials for signer one, and then I come back to the top and do all of signer two. So what that allows me to do is not make any mistakes to where I put two initial fields for signer one and I forget signer two or something like that. Um, it's just something that I have gotten in the habit of doing. So it may work for you, it may not, that's totally fine. Uh, you can do it either way. So again, buyer's initials, if you click just below the line here, it will put it right where you want it to be. So again, I wanna come in and just resize this the first time, just so it fits in my little box. And then when I come down here the second time, you'll notice that it's exactly the right size. 
And then the same way I can do my buyer's signature, I can do my buyer's date, all those things, it goes all the way through. So I would go through and put this on each page. Now, when I get down to, there's two documents that you as an agent have to sign, the lead-based paint addendum and the HOA, I'm sorry, the uh, FHA VA addendum, which is this one. So again, I'll put my buyer's initials up here and you would go through and put these on all of the documents, but I'm obviously skipping because I don't need to show you guys how to do this 47 times. Yeah, put the date field in here, just like this. Done. Now right here is broker or agent. So this is your buyer. This is going to be you. So when you come in here to my signature and I've got mine set up for Heather because she does all of the deals. I don't actually do them. And then date signed comes in here. So this actually puts your agent or your signature as the agent right into this document. Okay. Come all the way through, click done. It's going to take us back to the other screen. We're going to do the same thing for document two. Open it up. Signature field. Now, again, when we open a new document, we're going to have to resize it the first time. So we just kind of grab the corners and get it the size we need. Click date, done, done. Okay, so now we have these documents all put together. So we want to create this bundle. So let's go ahead and create the bundle. So signer one, I'm just going to do it for me so that I can show you guys kind of how this works. And then please sign the 5392 Mariner contract. Let's go ahead and send it. You would put in the address for both signers, but obviously there aren't two signers. That's so just gonna be me. So let me come over here. And this is the email that your customer will receive. So you guys can see exactly what it looks like. They get this email that says, Ocean Team has sent you a document. You click to open it. Okay, let me go make this its own window. Right at the top, they're gonna click, I agree. And then this button turns orange to say, get started. So pretty straightforward. Again, we're gonna click start and it will ask, it'll take them right to this first one and ask them how they want their signature to look. So in this case, they can type their name in this box and they can pick one of six styles. I'll just go with this one. Takes me to the next one, click it. Same thing for initials. What do you want your initials to look like? They type their initials in here, whatever it is. If they're using a middle initial, then they need to put that in here as well. Click add, signature, initials, initials, signature, signature. And then this orange button pops up and says done. When they click done, it's going to finish. And it says, you'll receive a copy in your inbox. So they will actually be emailed a copy of this document. But if for whatever reason they want to, they have the option to download it right here. So no problem, we're gonna go ahead and close it. Now I'll go back and it says completed. So because I was the signer here, it's going to show it completed. Now, when I download this package, you're going to notice that at the very end, it puts that audit trail in there for you. Guys, this is so, so, so important. We have to have this audit trail for compliance, okay? So you'll hear the admins tell you your deal is missing the audit trail. This audit trail shows who signed it, the IP address, and the email address that it was sent to. What this does is it shows for legal compliance that the buyer or the seller or whoever the customer is, is the one that actually signed this document, okay? So we can download that one. We can download this one, same thing. It's in there, let me zoom this out. And then your audit trails at the end. These are ready to be uploaded and split in the back office if they, excuse me, I got hiccups, if they need to be. Okay, so you can download this. You also will receive a copy of this email. Bear with me, there it is. This is you as the agent that sent it. Also get the exact same email with those documents with the audit trail, okay? But let's just say, for example, that you accidentally delete the email or something happens. So I'm going to refresh my DigiSigner and it'll have a little green check mark here showing who it was sent to. Now, if I click this document and open it, it's going to have the signatures in there, but it doesn't have the audit trail, okay? So if I just come in here, now normally I would have the option to download it, but Actually, I still do, it's right here. 
this is what a lot of agents have been making a mistake in doing. They come into this document and they download it from here, but it doesn't have the audit trail. And we have to have that for compliance. So instead, what we want to do is come over here to more and use this download button. So from your document package, more download. When I download this package, it's going to download as a zipped folder, but it's going to have both of those documents in it. And it's also going to have my audit trail at the end right there. So make sure when you guys are downloading these documents that you're not just clicking on the title and downloading it from here, but instead you're going to more and then download. That way you guys can have that audit trail. Now here's the other thing that I would encourage you to do. Some people, agents have said, hey, this gets really cumbersome to try and go in and find all the documents as they pertain to a particular deal. So what I would encourage you to do is once you get this done, create a folder that's called, um, let's just call it Mariner Contract, because that's the one I'm using. Now, what I can do is I can click on the documents that pertain to whatever that is, and I can actually move them into that folder. So now they're all right there. So it's a way to keep this nice and organized, a way that you guys can keep all your stuff together and you're not going to have any problems with it. For the love of all things sacred, do not come in here and delete these. I've had agents that have said, hey, you know, once I went in and uploaded it, then I went to my DigiSigner and deleted it. Guys, don't do that because there inevitably will be a situation where somebody will come back and go, hey, can you produce this document? It's so easy to just go ahead and keep it saved in your contract folders, nice and organized, easy to find, and it's all right here ready for you guys to go. So that's DigiSigner. It's pretty straightforward. As you guys can see, even people who are not exceptionally technologically savvy should not have any problems with this. So if you have any questions, please let us know, but hopefully that's helpful and gives you guys a, a good overview of DigiSigner and how to use it. Thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you again soon.